Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. According to our biomarkers, in the last few years, both my wife and my bone density scores were below average and in the osteopenia range. Especially in the case of my wife, her score was getting lower and lower in the last two checks. We decided to study some scientific research to see if there is anything that we can do to at least stop the deterioration. After a nine months pause, we have recently had our biomarkers checked again. The outcome was that both of our BMD scores not only did not go lower, but have actually improved. We were surprised at this result, as the common understanding is that it is not easy to recover bone density at our age, especially for my wife, who is around menopause and whose score is now better than two years ago, when she was in the osteopenia range, but has now returned to the normal range, based on the score of a healthy 30-year-old. In this video, we would like to share with you our experience. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing our personal experience and updates. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Let's have a look at our numbers, but first, a quick review on what BMD is. As defined by the WHO, osteoporosis is a BMD score of less than minus 2.5, and osteopenia is a score of less than minus 1, but more than minus 2.5. Above minus one is considered normal. The score works by comparing bone mineral density with that of a typical 30 year old, the age when people tend to have the highest BMD. There are a number of things that impact BMD, age and sex being two of them, along with diet and exercise. In general, BMD peaks at about 30 years of age and is stable to around 50, where it starts to decline. The amount of bone is dependent on the rate of formation and breakdown. After 50, typically the rate of breakdown exceeds that of formation. Postmenopausal women are particularly at risk because of the hormonal changes which happen at menopause. Here are our results for the past two years. I've superimposed the WHO definitions of normal and osteopenia. If we look at my wife's score, we can see she was in the normal range two years ago, but her score deteriorated to minus 1.4 in late 2020, but has now bounced back to minus 0.6, which is in the normal range and better than two years ago. My numbers are not as dramatic, but still we have about a 30% improvement overall, and we can see that the rate has increased since the end of last year. There are a few lifestyle interventions that we are doing that may contribute to our bone health. We're doing strength training one to two times a week, walking and running occasionally, and using a standing desk instead of sitting too much. For supplements, we are taking D3K2. Although please note that all of these started more than two years ago, which was before our first test. In the recent nine months, the main difference in our behavior after our last physical check is that based on the science research since May 2021, we have been taking l Ruteri 6475 probiotic supplement. Let's have a quick review of why we chose this probiotic. Here is the paper. Probiotics as a new regulator for bone health, a systematic review and meta-analysis. The gut microbiota have been proposed to have an impact on bone health but the data on taking probiotics and bone health is conflicting. So the authors performed a systematic review to assess the effects of taking probiotics on bone health. They found 44 studies that met their criteria. Their overall conclusion was that probiotic supplementation might improve bone health, with further studies being needed to determine the particular probiotics and dosage. They looked at 37 animal trials, which were mostly on rodents, and seven clinical trials. I will look at these in a little more detail. Three were on healthy postmenopausal women. Two were on postmenopausal women with osteopenia, where osteopenia is the condition of low bone health, which is less serious than osteoporosis. One with adults with high cholesterol and one with overweight or obese adults. 
I think that the majority of the studies were on postmenopausal women, as this is the group especially susceptible to bone health issues. Five of them were randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trials, and two were not. The lengths varied from one day to 11 months. The probiotics used were Lactobacillus, Helveticus and Ruteri, and Bacillus subtilis. The summary across the various trials shows an increase in calcium and 25 OHD. Calcium is important as the concentration of cerium calcium impacts how quickly bone is reabsorbed. As Professor Burr discussed, and 25 OHD, also called calcifidiol, is an active form of vitamin D that is required for bone formation. There was decreased parathyroid hormone, or PTH. This hormone causes bone resorption when serum calcium levels are low. And the outcome was that the hip BMD was increased and there was reduced loss of BMD in other leg bones. In the summary, they say that they did find that probiotic supplementation had positive effects on bone health parameters such as serum calcium and PTH levels. And mentioned specific strains of bacteria that were beneficial. As well as the review, we also saw this paper, which talks specifically about L. ruteri and led us to try this species rather than any other. In fact, we are taking one capsule daily rather than two as recommended. The supplement also contains vitamin D, which is important for bone formation. This does seem to be working for both of us, according to the latest results we mentioned, and we did read a few anecdotal cases which also saw good results as well. We have only been taking it for four months. I might consider taking two capsules daily and hope my score can be reversed to a normal range as well in my next health check. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.